I'm moving, moving forward every day. Jesus, I just let him lead the way every second, every minute, every hour of the day. I'm moving with Jesus every day. There's no doubt that 2014 was an unforgettable year in the life of Rodney Marchand. Rodney says he owes his life to God. My name is Julian Mahara Simpson, and I'm your host for today for JC 24-7, sitting in for Pastor Steve Riley. We have Rodney on Saturday. Rodney, we are blessed to have you there. Are you blessed to be alive? Yes, definitely. I am blessed to be alive. Tell us, yeah. Rodney, were you always a Christian? I mean, some people have one near-death experience. You're saying you had several. I mean, you always a Christian? Yes, I was always a Christian. I was born and raised in Adventist home. But it's only the last four years that I really, truly accepted Christ. Four years? Yeah. Okay, but you were always a Christian, but only four years you accepted yes, Christ. Let's go only. back in time. <laughs> what happened in your life to, to bring this about? Well, you did... It's a very um, specific date, because the day before Valentine's Day, I actually was supposed to put the end of a, let me say, a lifetime of stress with my body illness, you know. We, find, we finally found the solution uh -huh. to an ongoing problem right. since I was nine well, years old. Nine years yeah. old, so that's like over 20 years now. Over 20 years. What were you suffering from? To this date, we are not sure. There's no name. <laughs> there's no name. So there's an unknown disease. <laughs> yes, an unknown disease. Uh, hmm. Just an irritating disease. I just tell, didn't go. Tell us more about your symptoms. My, my symptoms were fever. I'll have fever for sorry, nine months for the year, ten months of the year. Wow. And when come close to Christmas time, I'll have one month. And then as the year starts again, you will go through the same process. And this went on for a while, nine till 16 years, okay. where, you know, um, things got a little easy for a while. Mm -hmm. How did yeah. it affect you physically? Physically, well, I was a kid that was um, very active, you know, into sports, football, running, you know, very fast runner. And with this illness, I was unable to move, wow. right? You was bedridden for most of your time. Wow, so you went yeah. from being an active child, I mean, having lots of friends, I suppose. Yeah. I mean, how did lots that affect of friends. you? Very popular. Yeah. And everybody liked to be around Rodney because it was always playing, shooting, gun shooting, riding bikes, everything, you know. Yeah, like the typical boy. Typical boy. Right, yeah, right, right. Yeah. But so moving from that to being a sick child in bed all the time, I mean, how did that change yeah. your physical appearance? Well, my appearance was changed so drastic that my friends give me a, a nickname, Cricks. Cricks? Why Cricks? <laughs> yeah, because I look white and pale and hard. Oh, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh. Like, <laughs> just like what a Cricks look like. Right. You know? <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah. Boys will be boys. Yeah, yeah, boys will be boys. I mean, after a while, you accepted it because you're sick for lo so long when you look at yourself in the mirror. You actually started to look like a crux. So you had yeah. lost a lot of weight. <laughs> lost a lot of weight. My kneecaps was actually bigger than my thighs. Wow. I had more eyes in my head than face itself. Wow. You know, your yeah, cheekbone was high. You know, so yeah. looking back on the photos now, yeah, it was looking really hard. But yeah. Wow, that's kind of difficult to, to picture, you know, such a drastic yeah, change yeah. for you. And you said this went on for many, many years. Yeah. Did you get relief in anything? Anything you tried? Any doctor you saw? All the doctors I went to, they say that I was a perfectly normal child. Just probably need a little um, tablet or some medicine. And they'll give you a tablet, something to drink. And the fever will still stay. Everything will still be there like normal. Wow. You know, and you just, you know... 
there with your bed and you're good. How, you does, know, so. how did this affect you, I mean, mentally, because you would have become a lonely child? Yeah, yeah, this affected me really, really bad. And, um, you know, in public, you try not to pay attention to what people say and you try right. to make it look like if nothing's bothering you. But when you reach home, I would cry a lot. Wow. I didn't want anybody to see me crying because I grew up in an era where guys don't cry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, as a child, I tried to bottle everything inside. Yeah. And I would just cry, 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 cry. So I mean, I cry myself to sleep. Wow. You know, and, um, Did you ever reach out to God at, at that time? Yeah, at that time, you all, the only friend you had was God. Because all the friends you had before, they stopped coming to look for you because you were sick for so long mm -hmm. that I think everybody got accustomed to the routine you know, that, okay, he's no longer with us. And you, you, think, know, if, you think they had given up on you? It seemed to me that they gave up on me. Did you ever give up on yourself? I never gave up on myself. And did God yeah. ever give up on you? And God never gave up on me. Okay. He was my only friend. I would talk to him. You know, I'd read, you know, passages of scripture from Psalms, you know, Solomon. I always look at the, the, the scriptures that will talk about wisdom. Mm -hmm. You know, and I always look forward to the day when I would walk properly again. Yeah, because it affected you know. your ability to walk. Yes, you'll get a lot wow. of cramps. So sometimes you're walking and you're leg will cramp up, you can't walk, you was afraid you fall, mm -hmm. you know, you cannot jump off of heights because, you know, you're going to fall, you cannot do anything that a normal person would do, you know, so the safest place to be was in your bed. Right. Yeah, so. Did you ever get angry with God? No, I never got angry with God, mm -hmm. you know, I was more angry with people, mm -hmm. I guess I probably was too small to know, to think that way, but you were so angry with people, like, why they wouldn't come and look for me? You know, why they wouldn't, you know, come and play with me. Right. I can't play outside, but at least they could play with me on a bed. Right, right. You know, and you always look forward to somebody coming and play with you. Okay, but, okay. You but thing, things change around for you? Yeah, things change around. You know, um, at age 16, my aunt came with a solution. Mm -hmm. And it worked. And it actually gave me new... How to say it? New hope. Yeah. New hope. How long did you yeah. take that for? What was it exactly? It was a small vial of womb medicine. Womb medicine. So <laughs> yeah. wait. So the problem that you had, was it related to digestion? Or did you have a name for it? If you had a name for it, what would you call it? Yeah. If I had a name for it, um, probably <laughs> I would call it the um, trouble tummy. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Because all the problems would be in your stomach. In your stomach. Everything you eat, yeah. you will throw it up. Wow. You know, nothing you eat will stay down. Mm -hmm. You know? So, I mean, it was really um, a, a weird problem. Yeah. The doctors, they check for worms, they check for everything, and they said, mm -hmm. you have no worms, you have no problem. You just probably have growing fever, but I just wasn't growing. Wow. wow. Sounds, yeah. sounds very distressing. <laughs> very, very distressing. Okay, yeah. so... After many years of suffering, after 20 years, you were telling us earlier that you got your breakthrough. Got my breakthrough. Finally, well, my sister put me on to a doctor, and she actually was one of the first doctors that ever listened to what I was saying. Mm -hmm. Everybody will think that they are doctors, so they will tell me what is wrong with me. Mm -hmm. But she was the first doctor that asked me what exactly is wrong with me. Right. What am I feeling? What are my symptoms? Mm -hmm. You know, and she decided to um, do a colonoscopy. Right. She said she think that is the only solution for this problem. And what did they find? Well, when she tried to do the colonoscopy, she realized that the tube couldn't pass. Wow. So she was pretty scared when she saw that. I know she asked me to, um, to go and do a, a series of other tests. Right. Did the test show anything that... The tests could help the doctors. The tests were pretty scary, because scary in what yeah, way? Everything that they was expecting, it was totally opposite. They gave me a liquid to drink. The technician, you know, would ask me. Okay, I, I asked the technician. I say, how long would this test take? Mm -hmm. Because each test you had to go on a on a hunger fast for right, a, yes. a period of a, probably 24 hours. You know, and um, I say, how long would this take? Because we're not too well. Mm 
Mm -hmm. So you don't know how long you could stay hungry right. for. And I would have said, no, nah, just half an hour. Good. And how, and, the, how long did it a take? A normal half an hour test would take a whole day. All day? All day. So all after day, you sometimes. waited all day to do this test, I assume yeah. you got good results? No. no. The results were actually <laughs> worse than what they were expecting. Wow. What did, they, what, what, what did they find? They actually found that my intestines were not normal. In the initial oh. test that they found, they um, actually thought a technician had a problem and she wasn't fit for the job. Wow. Yeah, and when they reviewed the test again, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they realized that it came up with the same photo. The same photo. So that showed that something was wrong. Something was definitely wrong inside. Right, right. So the doctor said, here, yeah, what do you have to do an emergency surgery? Emergency meaning yeah. right away or you had some as time? As soon as possible. As wow. soon as possible. As soon as wow. the doctor is actually able to do it. Wow. So when did they set the date for? So I went and spoke to the doctor uh -huh. and he said that was Tuesday. And on Thursday he said, um, yeah, he said Tuesday will be my next free date. Get your things organized and we do it. Two days. You have, how did that make you Dude. feel? <laughs> I was nervous. I was wow. scared. I was, wow. yeah, I was in a total mess. Wow. Because everybody I know do surgery in Trinidad. Mm -hmm. But let's say 60% survive. So I was just like, wow, you're going to die. Nervous. Yeah, you're going to die. But clearly you didn't because yeah. you're here on the set with us. Yes. We're yes. going to take a short break. When we get back, we're going to find out what happened to Rodney in surgery. SOS. Yes, SOS. ACM 2018 presents SOS. Saving our society with, with Jesus. Jesus. Join us at the Queen's Park Savannah as the Seventh-day Adventist Church for one full week rallies to rescue a runaway society. Come help stop bullying in our schools. Learn the art of self-defense. Intimate partner violence. Growing from boys to men. Surviving the recession. Straight talk with a gay community. Is the church losing its purity? These, along with fun activities for the kids, it's ACM's SOS. Adventist Camp Meeting, Saving Our Society. Beginning Sabbath, March 24th to Sabbath, March 31st with Heather Dawn Small, Women's Ministries Director of the General Conference. Dr. Jeffrey Brown, Family Life Educator of the General Conference. President Cheyenne O'Connor of the Cayman Islands Conference and international devotional speaker, Dr. Ainsworth Keith Morris of California. The responsibility for envisioning, articulating, and providing for the needs of our community. Come on, let's get all hands on deck. It's SOS at the Queen's Park Savannah. On both Sabbaths from 9 a.m. And from 3 p.m. daily, except Monday. Gates open from 1 p.m. with a variety of booths and close at 8.45 p.m. after the nightly devotions. Don't forget to join the Adventist Calvocate on Sunday, March 25th from 4 p.m. This, this is, is an, an urgent, urgent appeal, appeal SOS, SOS, to a, a nation, nation reeling in distress. distress. So we're back and we're talking with Rodney Marchand giving us a powerful testimony on how God saved his life. So Rodney, we were talking about the surgery. You were telling me you had two days notice to prepare for the surgery. Yeah. Tell us what happened. <laughs> yeah, well, that was a real, you know, stressful time for me because surgery was not on my agenda. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, finances had to be put in place, mm -hmm. you know, mental stability, you know, was not actually the the um, how to say it was not the the item of the day. Right. How was your relationship with God at that time? My relationship was God with God at that time was pretty shaky mm -hmm. because I reached a point in life where you know so much was going wrong mm -hmm. that you know you just all you you reach a point where you finally found a solution. So much was going wrong. And you start to question certain things about God. Is this God thing really real? Is this God thing, you know, really, you know, what they say it is? Mm -hmm. how, how I know that what they tell me about God, what I read about God is, mm -hmm. is true. Right. You know, what, you know, and I was like, here, what, we done reach here already? Mm -hmm. Let's go through the surgery. Yeah. 
I mean, it can't get worse than this. Wow. So yeah. what did the doctors tell you? Because remember, we saw they saw the images of your yeah. intestines looking kind of unusual. Unusual. So what did they tell yeah. you? Because I know you were under anesthesia. So what did your family <laughs> and doctors tell yeah. you happened? Right. When I came to, um, so my wife, you know, she was uh, she trying to be strong. She was, you know, looking at me in this weird kind of way. When I came to, I realized I was in ICU. Wow. So then I, then I said that wasn't part of the financial, you know, preparation. ICU was never on the agenda. It was supposed to be a straightforward surgery, go right. to a recovery, mm -hmm. and I back to work in two weeks. Mm -hmm. Only to see that I, I woke up in ICU. So I asked my wife, I said, well, what happened? She said, you almost died. Wow. I said, what? He said, yeah, you, um, the surgery was okay, mm -hmm. and in recovery, they noticed that, um, you're bleeding internally. Right. And um, they had to rush you back into surgery. So you had another surgery. So I had another wow. surgery. Only to find out that one of his staples fell out. Mm -hmm. And did a normal surgery into, you know, this weird situation, you know. She said she couldn't even make out the person on the stretcher that was passing. She didn't even know that was her husband passing. Oh, and um, I was like, I really did remember someone slapping my face and trying to keep me awake, you. you know? And um, doctor said when he got inside there, everything was wrong side. He took actually two hours to try to figure out what he was actually seeing. Wow, you know? so that kind of explains all the pain and the stress you were going through yeah. in your stomach. You know, he found mm -hmm. the appendix on the other side, you know, so... I can't imagine, and you're still yeah. functioning. Still functioning. Yeah. You know, he, he said, boy, it's only God have you alive. He said, the condition you was in, he said, you actually supposed to be dead a long time ago. Wow, but God right? kept you. But God kept me alive for a purpose. For a purpose. You know, Amen. and, you know, after that surgery, I was like, wow, look at how much years I suffered. Mm -hmm. I don't need to realize, you know, hey, a new life begin. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Wow, Rani, that is powerful. And we thank yeah. God for keeping you. Yeah. Now, that was one near-death experience. You told me you had several near-death experiences in that same year, 2014. What else happened yeah. to you? Well, later on that year, um, I was about to, um, you know, pick up my wife by her family, mm -hmm. and I was just cruising a Sunday. Right. And out of nowhere, this car ran off the road, came back on the road, and just knocked my car off the road. Wow. You know, threw the car under the guardrail. And um, I was like, what just happened here? Where this car came from? Because it's a cool Sunday evening, you know, the road is pretty thick. Where he came from? Uh, did the car stop? The car never stopped. He drove off. So I was just there with the mercies of the good citizens mm -hmm. that um, came to my rescue, who saw everything. You know, and when the police came and he saw the car, he was actually asking me, "Where is the driver?" He said, um, "Did he make it? You know, is the driver dead?" Wow, and I you were no. there to tell him no. I I'm, said, no, I am, I I'm am the driver. <laughs> yeah, I'm alive. Thank <laughs> you, God. Yeah, he was like, you lie. <laughs> I said, no, I'm the driver. Because tell me about the car. Yeah. What happened that made him made such a statement? When he saw the car, all you were seeing was just engine. You know, the glass was shattered. You know, no windscreen was there. The side, you know, my side glass was gone. You know, the hood was, you know, kicked in. The car was in a total mess. Car was a total mess. Wow. When he saw the the spot, he said, "But well, this hood supposed to be off the car." Wow! You so know? if the hood had gone off the car, what would have happened to you? If the hood had gone, well, my whole upper body yeah. would have gone with the car. You know, and he was like, "Say, wow!" You blame it on the type of car, but I know mm -hmm. it's not the type of car. Yeah, you know, that, that's God. God, yeah. yeah, God alone could have, you know, saved me that day. Wow. You know, so. Rodney, yeah. so you had this surgery, yeah. which was a few months before. Yeah. Later on in the year, you ended up in this, another near-death <laughs> experience in this crash. Well. Rodney, you're trying to tell me you still have another near-death experience in that same year, 2014? Yeah, that same year. 
I think um, the devil was on our mission wow. to take me out that year because he probably that God knew. was on a bigger mission. Yeah, to take he you probably knew that God had a plan for my life. Amen. And um, he decided, here what? We didn't get you for the surgery. We didn't get you for the car. We definitely gonna get you this time with this explosion because this one gonna be so big that you cannot get away. Wow. What yeah. exactly happened that day? That it was a normal, normal um, routine day at work. Mm -hmm. You know, we all got to work. Everybody was in good spirits, everybody laughing, having fun. And um, on the way to start my job, you know, the guy in charge would say, hold on. So the time frame that we were supposed to do our routines, mm -hmm. everything shifted that morning. Right. And um, we were really, really having a good time that morning. And, you know, when we head out, when we decided to head out and start our jobs now, where I work at a very noisy place. Mm -hmm. So you need earplugs. You right. Know, you can't even hear yourself speak sometimes. Mm -hmm. Were you able to carry out your usual routine that day? No, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Mm -hmm. I tried to carry it out. Right. But um, this voice, you know, on the way, don't say this, everything just got silent. And this voice just decided that, you know, he's going to interrupt my routine. Right. And I had a dialogue with this voice. So. Uh -huh. And this voice was actually trying to restrict me from doing my normal routine. And that is a routine you do every day? Every day. It's straightforward. You look for the easiest route, and you get your job done efficiently. Right. So what was the voice telling and, uh, you to do differently that day? My normal route would be to take left, the voice say, go right. <laughs> I was like, you have to be crazy. You sent me a whole block to do, no, 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 that's crazy. Mm -hmm. And the voice actually is like, don't go. You have to go this way. So you almost and started arguing with this voice. I was arguing with this voice now. Mm -hmm. I was like, why, where you came from? Why are you harassing me? Why, uh -huh. why, why, are, you, why are you stressing me out, uh -huh. right? I, I want to go this way. This is the easiest route, right? And if I go out and make a block, he said, well, you run the savannah every day. What's your problem? You can't make an extra block for one day. <laughs> I was like, here what? This is what you want me to do? Right? If this will make you leave me, mm -hmm. I will go and do it. Okay, so you went the opposite direction. So I went the opposite direction and I followed the voice. Made a routine on that side. Heading back now is a spot that's supposed to spend between 10 to 15 minutes, depending on the situation. Right. I rest down the, the sheet. The voice say, here what? Take up the sheet, move from there, go to the back. So go to another location. Another location. Okay, not accustomed going not to. At that point in time. And the voice, was, voice started arguing again. And I was like, why are you still here? Why does you just keep harassing me? Why, why you just wouldn't leave me alone? So you listen to the voice again. So I listened to the voice again and um, I left the area. And as I went to the back of the building, sirens went out, ground shook. And when I dropped what I had. What uh, happened? At that point in time, I didn't know what happened. Right. All I know, something happened. Right. And <laughs> I ran back to the building, only to realize everything was just white. Just, I don't know if a steam I seen, I don't know if a mm -hmm. smoke I seen, I don't know what it is I seen. Everything just white, I cannot see anything. And um, all in my mind is, hey, run. Don't go upstairs. But if I run, then I'll be disciplined. Because my job, I'm supposed to get back yes. to the... To meet your team. To meet the team. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I decide here what, let's get in. When run through everything, only to realize that my, my guys, because I thought all my partners was dead. Everything was just quiet after that yeah. explosion. So it's just like, so it was an explosion. Yeah, it was an explosion. Oh, I was wow. just like, no, no, don't tell my partner's dead. I don't want to see nobody dead upstairs. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, it was real, real, real traumatic. So did you for reach me. them? In, in, did you reach to your team? I reached to my team. Mm -hmm. And they were, were they injured or? Nobody was harmed. Okay. Everybody was right. just shaken. Everybody was scared. Everybody didn't know what to do. You know, we made everything safe. And after the smoke cleared, mm -hmm. I went to the area where this voice was trying to keep me away from. Right. And on getting there, I realized it was filled with bricks from over 15 to 20 feet away. It was filled with water. And that's the spot where you usually... And that's the spot I was supposed to sit. Oh, and the time frame okay. that I was supposed to be there, 
I would have been, if not scalded to death, blown to pieces, damaged with a brick, because the temperatures you have to do is over 900 degrees Fahrenheit, and the pressures wow. is over that. So I know for sure I would have been dead. Rodney, <laughs> if yeah. that was not the voice of God, I don't yeah. know what is. Yeah. I got chills after that experience. Mm -hmm. Even now I'm telling the story, my pause still reason, because the first time I ever had a conversation with somebody you can't see. Yes. People think that you're going mad. Yes. But, but it you're not. It was God. Yeah, and yeah. God kept you alive. God kept me alive. Three times in one year, God saved your life. Three times in one year. Thank you, Rodney, for joining us on JC 24-7. You're welcome. It was a pleasure having you here, sharing your touching and powerful testimony. I mean, pleasure. God still is still in the miracle working business. Yeah. He did it for me. A few months ago, I shared my testimony. He did it for you. And as the psalmist said in Psalm 46, 1, he's our present help in a time of trouble. So I'm your host, Jolie Miharis Simpson, sitting in today for Pastor Riley. Do join us again on JC 24-7. Thank you for viewing JC 24-7. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And remember to inspire your living as you prepare for heaven. You can get it all on JC 24-7.